What's up with y'all, YouTube? It's Exquisite Boy Jay, and I'm bringing you Life with Jay. Today, we're doing a podcast about PV. I'm with JoJo Chanel, and I'm with A3, and we about to kick this shit off. What's happening with it, y'all? What's up, y'all? How y'all feeling today? We're feeling good. It's a little rainy outside, but I guess it's cool or whatever. Shit, it's cool. <laughs> that rain need to chill out. Facts. Ain't nobody trying to walk in the rain. Because <laughs> <laughs> I did not go to class today because of the rain. Like, Facts. I'm not... Mm-mm. Just wet and wild for real. Not wet. <laughs> <laughs> nah, and then it want to get sunny out of nowhere. Like, like, how you gonna wake me up out of my sleep with rain, and then I walk outside and now it's sunny. Nah, I facts. Welcome to Texas, though. Hey. Right. But we're about to we're about to kick off this podcast, man. JoJo Chanel will be leading it today. So uh, yeah, it's been it's been a pretty crazy year for PV, especially with this being my first year. I ain't gonna lie, like. Since my sister went here and my mama went here, I already knew what I was getting myself into. But you don't really know what you're getting yourself into until you actually, actually hear. Not facts. Not facts. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, and especially because um, I think what really um, changed PV culture is that the fact that this is probably our first year back from COVID. Like, we officially not in COVID anymore. Not and facts. so we, like, outside all the time, Turn. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so, um, and then classes. I don't know, because they say, they say PV used to be a little bit more turnt prior to COVID, so I don't know. I heard that, too. So I don't know. I, are, we, are we really I outside for real? That's yeah. when we had PV act up and Bulls was running around and running people over. Yeah, <laughs> and I heard the... Uh, The Spring Fest was, was like, way better last year, too. Like nah, facts. Had more events. My freshman year homecoming to Spring Fest was turnt. Yeah. Honestly, we need to go ahead and bring that back, because I don't know what Spring Fest was. It's year. okay. It's good. The promo is going to bring the littest parties to PV. Okay, period. No littest cap. parties coming to you. Soon. No cap. Okay. And uh, what's y'all, y'all, y'all next party? Oh, uh, we're going to do a little something today, but we got PV Act Up and PV Uncut on the 28th and the 29th. So. Okay. Okay. That's the next thing. I'm in family first. I ain't going to lie. We having a party, like, I think the same day. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, I yeah. mess with y'all, though. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, we, we mess with y'all, too. We we mess with all the... I feel like Family First is the only promo group that don't have beef with anybody. Nah, facts. Oh, my God. Like, we, we love everybody's promo team. But, yeah. Uh, how do you think COVID affected um, PV? How do I think COVID? Here? And then how do you think COVID affected you with you being here? Because I know you're a freshman, but you're a sophomore. Well, so, like... COVID really affected me my senior year. Like, when I came to PV, it wasn't really nothing different. Because I really just transferred here in the summertime. I was going to blend my freshman year, mm-hmm. blending college station. So when I transferred here my 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 summer, mm-hmm. well, this summer that just passed, then that's when I was here. But it was pretty much normal. Like, my freshman year when I was going to blending college station, we were still coming to the parties here. We were still doing everything here. What made you want to transfer to PV from Blaine? Because I'm an ag- agriculture major. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, why facts. didn't you want to come here first? Be- okay, so this is what happened, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to go to A&M. So I got a septic in every school that I applied to. I got a septic to go here too. But then I wanted to go to A&M. And so I was like, well, A&M had offered me like a thing where if I go to a sister school for a year, then I could um, transfer to them the year after. Okay. But then... I got thinking about it when I was out there in College Station. I was like, do I really want to do this or do I want to go to HBCU? Right. I mean, it was cool, like, but at the end of the day, I was like, nah, I think I'm just going to go to PV. We lit. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Show <laughs> to people. HBCU is where it's at, man. Nah, That's facts. What about you, Aiden? All right, so me personally, I think COVID and the way it affected me at PV, I feel like this was our first year where it's like protocols are really lifted up and things of that right. sort. So, like, a lot of traditions and things like that, a lot of the people who are throwing them and, like, having things going, they've graduated by now. So mm-hmm. the leadership and people that we have above us are people who came out of that COVID culture. Right. So I feel like it has a huge effect on, the, like, the different things that we do, the different things we see on campus as far as, like, the way we move. Um, and even still, like, even though COVID is over, people still kind of treat it as if it's their, you know, life after COVID yeah. is never going to be the same as it was before. So. I do feel like it had an impact mm-hmm. on, like, the party culture, the school culture, like, the different type of events we had. Because, like, my mother went here, uh, my aunts went here, and, like, when they explained to me some of the things that went on at PV when they went here, it, it was wild. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. I see it getting back to there at some point. Yeah, definitely. But, <laughs> I just but, don't know if it's going to be the point when I'm still here. <laughs> got you. Well, I feel like, I definitely feel like um, COVID 
Definitely. I feel like since we are the first class to really be in college without going back and forth, oh, it's COVID in the school, so now we got to go back to online, we got to go back home. We really the first gen- generation in college. Like, class of 26 is the first class to but have even full still, college. But right. even still, you got to think back to Summer Bridge and stuff like that. We got shut yes. down due to COVID, you know. Not they had the, time. the first couple of weeks, the MSC was closed. It was grab and go. Yeah. I was, was here COVID. during the summertime. I was taking summer class. Okay. And, like, it was some people, they had to go, like, quarantine in certain rooms and stuff. I was like, yeah. damn, you sad as hell. You in that room for about a week straight alone. Yeah. <laughs> no, because some of our friends would be like, we, we, we wouldn't see them for, like, a couple of days. And like, dang, where y'all been? And it was like, oh, we had COVID. Like they sliding mm-hmm. their food through the door and shit, right? <laughs> or just putting it at the doorstep. Oh my! When that, when our whole building, um, in the nursing program, because we shared the building with the nursing program, when our whole building, um, on the second floor, uh, had pizza boxes outside their doors, That's like crazy. it was like, okay, so you know what I'm saying? It's just it's something crazy to see. Um, there are other PV controversies as well, like uh. So, like I said, like I know a lot because my mom and my sister went here. Have y'all heard of PV Pond Girl? Pond Girl. Oh yeah, ain't that the girl who uh, jumped in the pond butt naked? Yes, like yeah, I heard about. Hey, that. y'all know it's yeah. crazy. They got this ritual that. at A and M. Like, well, I think it's a ritual where like the people go run and jump in each pond. Oh no, no, what, that's what on pond? campus. That's like uh-uh. on campus. No, I feel like after her, the PB Pond girl, they definitely stopped the running around naked during homecoming after her because, like, we ended up on the news. Uh, so who's she used that to run that? around naked? No, like, everybody used to run around naked, and then yeah. she just happened to jump in the Jump into the pond. pond. That's crazy. Yeah, and start twerking. <laughs> like, they had videos of her and everything. I gotta look up the pond girl. <laughs> you, no, look, they made hey, a song about her, too. Swear. It's on Twitter and everything. Yeah. I swear. I'm gonna it's not hard up. to find. That's at crazy. All. Yeah, and then the the Texas A and M racism that that happened. Well, I think it was either a year ago or two years ago. With uh, we played Texas A and M, and then they was like really really butt hurt and started saying uh, this sign is like as much as a PV degree, and it was like some raggedy sign with spray paint on it. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, that happened, and then I feel like the stuff now. Y'all heard about that that Chris Sayles controversy where he was going around kissing freshmen, Facts. and it's like, bro, let's Weirdo. get serious, bro. <laughs> like, bro you're you're, you're a grown ass man, <laughs> right? Like, why and are you even here? some of the freshmen, some of the freshmen are underage. Like when I came here, I was underage. So some it's people like, be like seventeen for real. Yeah, sixteen even. There's a lot of sixteen year olds here, and that's or crazy. there were getting trouble for real for that. That's what I'm saying. So if he messed around and kissed the wrong person, then it's like. Let's and them girls, they don't be giving a fuck when they see somebody that's famous. Yeah. Honestly, I ain't going to say too much on that because, like, you know, your body, your choice, I guess. But for Chris to do that on his part, it's just kind of like. Yeah, that's wrong on his end. You know what I'm saying? I never really gave too much backlash on the girls that were doing it. Right. Because at the end of the day, yeah, you're grown. You make your own decision. But mm-hmm. Man, you're a grown ass man with kids. Exactly. Thank you, you. You're a grown man with like, kids. If I had a daughter. I could, be, I could literally be your child. Like, he's almost 30. Facts. So it's just kind of like, bro. If I had a daughter, I thought I'd he was be in like, his thirties. No. He ain't in his thirties yet. He, he is. I thought he was. He not in there yet. I don't know. Maybe I'm. Uh, maybe I'm. He gotta be in his thirties. He's in his thirties. Yeah, because Queen Nas is kind of older too. I ain't gonna I lie. He's from with a yeah, big yeah. bag with that one. Y'all let me know. Uh, yeah. How old is he? Yeah. How old is Chris Sales or Chris Silas or whatever his name is? And then another thing I want to talk about is how the guy got arrested in the UC for running around naked. A guy was running around naked in the yes. UC. Do you remember that? Oh, okay. So I was actually out of town when this happened, but I was seeing all the group meetings when they were saying that it was a dude running around butt naked, and he was like ashy at first, mm-hmm. and then he went inside, and then he came back outside. But they were saying that like he was laced or something like that. But yeah, mm, laced with what? That boy had to be laced with some K two or some shit. Something <laughs> that like that boy is off there. He was off something because I running never, around butt naked is crazy in yes. the MSC. Like people try to eat their food. That's, no, 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 in the <laughs> nah, UC. In the UC. Oh, oh, in the MSC. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the MSC. That would be terrible. <laughs> like, but damn. speaking of the MSC and police, let's let's bring it back to that time where that dude was running from the police. Oh my god, like, I remember that. <laughs> like where where did he think he was going? And then bro stopped to pick up his phone. <laughs> Like <laughs> if you go run from the police, forget all that. Run, nigga, run! Like right. nah, facts. that's funny because and then like, it's like video. we live in the country. You running from the police? Where you gonna go? <laughs> no, you could, you gonna end up looking like a uh, what's that? That forbidden fruit or whatever it's called. Like no, you might not want to do that because I don't know, bro. They tweaking. <laughs> and then he got tackled by one of the slowest cops on campus. Right. Like, come on now. Oh my gosh, she was literally like she was running in slow motion. I'm like, you still got caught. 
Like, me personally. And then the police decided to have the audacity to drive up in the grass. And y'all stayed talking about some don't walk in the grass. And UPD want to drive all in the grass. I just you know, they like, do that regardless whether there's something going on or not. They they go drive where they want to drive. Nah, yeah. facts. That is so hypocritical. I ain't going to lie. Um, police reform needed on campus. <laughs> immediately. Seriously. Immediately. Police reform. <laughs> That's funny. But um, last thing I want to talk about with this big controversy thing, the, um, I feel like the PV party is getting taken away. I just. Bro, that was never going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. Either. It was never going to happen. Yeah. They, it they, was just to, you feel me? Just to scare Parties us. at PV bring too much money to the city. Mm-hmm. The Prairie View. Oh, and God. they already didn't got. So at PV, bro, it ain't much for people to do out here anyway. So in order for them to keep the college students intact, they had to just, you feel me, like, they have to be able to throw parties to let them let loose sometime. We ain't got nothing else to do. Exactly. And then them shutting down parties was never going to work because, like, yeah, think about it. Mm-hmm. Promo teams, they bring jobs to students. Like, I mean, you don't get paid much, but we still you still get, get paid, paid better than nothing. Money. Like, you get to make some extra money mm-hmm. for students that maybe can't work, can't do this, can't do that. You get to build a family, what people say. A lot of people come out here from different towns, different cities, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So when people come out here from different towns and different cities, they don't always have friends. They don't know nobody here. So I feel like like that's why when the freshmen come in, I try to always get a couple of freshmen to be on my team mm-hmm. so that they could build a family. Like I want my team to be like a family. Exquisite promos would be like a family. If they need something from me, I got them. If I got it, I got them. If they need to talk about something, if they need this, they need that, Like I'm just there. You feel me? Right. And a lot of people don't really have relationships with they people that's on their team. Don't know all the people that's on their team. Yeah. Like it's a lot of teams. I ain't gonna lie. It's a lot of teams out here with a hundred plus people mm-hmm. on their shit. Mm-hmm. But it's like, does the leader even know your name? Right. Facts. And sometimes people people just be on like the promo team just to be on the promo team. You know what I'm saying? Facts. So I just feel like it, with with me being on family first. Uh, there's I think close to a hundred, if not over a hundred people, and we be having like get togethers at the at G's house. Yeah. And I feel like there is no way there's a hundred people at this house. You know what I'm saying? They just Facts. be on the team just to be on the team. They don't sell any pre sales. They just like they just get in for free. Facts. So I just feel like not only is it like us as a team, we gotta fix that, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like the people that wanna be on the promo team, you can't say you wanna be on a promo team and then not do anything. Nah, facts. And another thing to like get off of that, um, a lot of people that join promo teams and don't really do stuff in promo teams, they, like you said, want to get in parties for free. But me, I'd rather have a solid, like, 25 to 30 people than have 100 plus people on my team. Yeah, for sure. Because yeah. if I got 25 to 30 people that's all putting in work, I don't need all those extra people. And the, a big difference between out here and throwing parties in Houston, because I throw parties in Houston also. In Houston, we have hosts. Mm-hmm. But I notice out here, y'all don't really have hosts. Like, in Houston, we'll make a host group chat with, like, 100-plus people, and that'll basically be the people that's posting and stuff outside of our just our team. Right. And if they get there before a certain time, they get in for free. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how when y'all do, like, the pregame and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But, like, take so coming to PV and taking away hosts, it's like they got to have 100-plus people. Yeah. You feel me? Of course. Because, like, if you got that many people – and they all posting, you ain't got to have a host, and, you ain't, and then you using the same people over and over. You feel me? Exactly. And I feel like um, uh, with the whole party promoters thing, since me and y'all are, me me and you guys are both party promoters, what's the craziest thing y'all seen at a party? <laughs> craziest thing I ever seen at a party? Mm-hmm. I ain't going to lie to you. The craziest shit I ever seen at the party was the other day, bro. When that one girl was grinding oh, dude's face. Please, no, bro. That was, I, that was, I was going to say that. I ain't going to lie. Like, That's the craziest thing. Dude, she had on pants for one, yeah. booty shorts for one, mm-hmm. and then you licking her, like, and like you on, could bro. literally see like the crease of her. Yeah, her, and I was like, Facts. you could see that. Oh my god! Shit, I seen somebody actually get ate out at a party before. No. I didn't see some wild stuff at no, man. but like they was. I don't know. That was wild. They was doing it on a trailer too, bro. Oh my gosh, bro! I be control your drunk people. And all control those times, drunk. all those crazy things that I've seen, I never go to that one party. I go to all the parties before that, and then something crazy happened at the next party. I'm like, bro, nah, I missed it. Like, right. <laughs> it is, bro. I just, oh my gosh, he be just home with crazy shit. I ain't gonna lie, motherfuckers be 
Climbing poles to the top. Yeah. Slipping on tent poles and shit. Like, now, poles, I be, like, looky, I be having the girls up ankle. Showing <laughs> titties and shit for beads and shit. Like, oh, no. Uh, Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm-mm. They be wildin'. Y'all getting that feeling. Y'all don't know how to act no more. <laughs> nah, <laughs> right. All right. home training out go out the window. window. But, hey, it is what it is. They Welcome to the hill. With me. But, like, I feel like that's why we consider a party school. People really go to this school because we be off the chain. Like, <laughs> nah, facts. Because before I came here, I was throwing parties. At TSU and in Houston mm-hmm. I mean the parties out there are lit too But they ain't like our field parties out here Like right. field parties out here You let loose for real Like it's funny when you see drunk motherfuckers Running around the field party and shit yeah. Trying yeah. to ride a mechanical bull and shit Like damn Wow was that <laughs> shade? Yeah, that fucked up Was that shade? <laughs> nah I didn't see you No right. that was shade Cause I was riding a mechanical bull <laughs> <laughs> But can we address a serious matter hmm. About these field parties and drunk people? Yeah, yeah. Fellas if you come to a party and you get drunk and you know you cannot control your hormones, yeah, please oh go home. God. Take your ass home. You y'all ain't gonna get killed behind one of these girls out here, but right. like it, it, it's ridiculous, man. Like y'all got to get control of that because mm-hmm. at this point, it's gonna get hectic. You feel right. me? Right. And I just feel like because there's a story at every party. I'm not gonna say her name, but my friend recently got sexually assaulted by one of these guys, and she put it on Twitter and she put his Instagram. Everything and it was just kind of like, bro. And I know the guy too, so I'm like looking at you. I'm like, you Shit know what I'm crazy. saying. And so you have to take. I feel like I take those situations with a grain of salt because, like, I know what it's like. You know what I'm saying. And so if if I know you a guy and I know you sexually assaulted, I have no respect for you whatsoever. That's not how you. That's not how you get like laid. That's not how you get. A Boys girl got at no all. motion. Exactly. <laughs> if you got to sexually assault somebody to get whatever you're trying to get, you. You a child, whole child for real, for real. Nah, facts for real. Yeah. All right. Next question: Who throw the craziest parties? And you can't be biased. Who throw the craziest parties? Can't Exquisite promos. Exquisite promos. Nah, 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 nah. Hey, night. Not okay. lit parties, but craziest, like craziest, craziest stuff be going on. The craziest. Mm-hmm. I'm not even gonna say a promo team. I'm just gonna say PV in general. You gotta say a promo team. Nah, I'm not doing that. <sighs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Fuck it. All right. Boom. So look. I'm going to say the craziest parties I've ever been to at PV right now. Mm-hmm. No bullshit, AR. AR. Yeah, I was going to say. I'm going to give it to them. Yeah, AR yeah, for sure. And they be them. having like 7,000. They had, what is it, 7,000 or 8,000 people at the last party. And I'm like, oh, my. God. It, like, it was packed nah, every facts, single time. You know it's crazy when a promoter is stomping niggas out at his own party. Nah, facts. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know it's crazy. That's like, crazy. Like that little combo he hit, that hoe was nice, but shit. A combo. <laughs> yeah, it was a combo. It was a, uh. A sticker And then that nigga fell And then he stomped him I'm like damn oh That shit gosh. crazy You trying to have beat up out of it But hey That's what happens When you sexually assault females At a party man As you should Hey though. that like, nigga hey, No bullshit That nigga don't play about None of his promo girls But Yeah nah, just, Rondo Yeah for sure Rondo nor um Asante but Asante yeah I, I was just seen, gonna say that But I done seen one time Some girls try to hop the fence He sent all his girls after they was beating her ass. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, yeah. wait. You said he... Tra- who? What? This was a uh, first semester. It was a party. Hell and, yeah. Like, people were trying to jump the fence to get in. Facts. And Rondo got on that mic. He said, I need all my promo girls to go over there. Nah, I don't know. If it, I don't know. I don't know which one it was, though. Well, it was somebody. It but was one of them. It was an AR promo party. And yeah. I'm crazy thing about. is, I seen the girls right in front of me getting their ass whooped. I was like, damn. Facts. First... That's he crazy. gave him a warning Like nigga If a nigga telling you Not to hop the fence You gonna go do it anyway You get your ass beat <laughs> Oh my god And then The UPD don't do nothing Hey I don't know bro I because mean Because they if be the you, first one Talking about some Waller County jet Like y'all be Y'all be like, first I one mean, yeah. <laughs> But it's like If you, you throwing a party If you throwing a party That's kinda like It's my house Right you know Of me? course Cause you Ooh. You rented it This is your money That's going into it So Fact, what makes Them you security think? be mean as hell too Them niggas will boot your ass For they real do. I seen a nigga the other day was just talking to his friend by the fence. They tried to say he hopped that motherfucker. Mm-mm. He was trying to hop the fence, nigga. They t- they told the nigga they was like, hell no, nah, you got to pay a hundred to get in, or you can't get in. That's that nigga crazy. was sad as hell. Well, what do y'all look forward to the most when it comes to parties? Shit, exquisite promos parties, man. No, I'm what do you look you. forward to? Like, what, what's y'all tradition? What exquisite promos? What's y'all tradition? Tradition. Uh-huh. I'm gonna say our tradition is like, like I stand by this motto: promoters with hospitality, mm-hmm. which oh, mean like. Okay. The people that's gonna come in, they gonna know. Like every time they come to the exquisite promos event, mm-hmm. they gonna be like properly 
care for it. Like, right. they going to have what they need. They're not going to really have to worry about nothing. And I got some ideas that niggas out here ain't doing. So it's like. Okay. We got some big okay. shit coming to y'all soon. Nah, facts for As real. y'all should. Okay. Now, one out of ten, how lit do y'all get? One out of ten? I'm going to give it a ten. Ten? <laughs> facts. I, I ain't had. I didn't have. A, I have not had a PV party, like a field party yet. Mm-hmm. But when I do, niggas going to know. Niggas gonna recognize. Oh, for sure, for sure. I love the I love the confidence. Better check out our Houston events to see what we be doing out there. Nah, we got facts. Houston events too. Facts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the Houston events that y'all throw, that's also a, like you call it exquisite promos. Exquisite. Yeah. So I got a, a exquisite promos Texas Southern team and an exquisite promos PV team. Oh, okay. So you you worldwide, Mister. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. I Worldwide. started with the Texas Southern team though. Okay, okay. Well, being a PV party school, I feel like people come here specifically for the people and the culture. Who do you think has PV in a choke code? March and Storm, Ruth the Truth, or Hump Day? Uh, if you want me to be real with you, nah, I'm just going to say Hump Day. Okay, okay. I'm just going to go with the Hump Day. <laughs> mm, for me, Ruth the Truth, Storm, or Hump Day? I feel like Root the Truth was probably a big movement, mm-hmm. but like most movements, things die down. Um, long term wise, the March of Storm has been doing stuff for a long time, you know. Nah, facts. Even People since, come to like homecoming football games to just listen to for them, the storm. Like they don't know a look about football. Yeah, right. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> the, the band, the band always the littest part of the school, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I the Hump so. Day is cool, but I ain't gonna lie. The Hump Days at PV been kind of lame lately. Well, what do you think would make it better? They need promotion. Like they, they need, need more activities. Yeah, like, activities. Like they gotta involve the students. Students don't want to listen to the same music, right? Being played in the same area. They're going through roll call. Yeah, and everybody going home. Like yeah, I feel like they can incorporate more things. In. I'm in House of Vision, so um, last year they did fashion shows and all that stuff. But this year, since Cab has a new advisor, we don't do fashion shows no more. Because cab don't the cab's advisor, not the cab people. Please don't get me wrong. The cab people are just fine, but the cab's advisor doesn't want us or doesn't allow us to do fashion shows no more. So we don't have a whole bunch of variety. And the other stuff that we did during Hump Day, it yeah. is no longer allowed because cab's new advisor. So I just feel like because y'all used to have like walk through the Hump Days and shit. Huh? Yeah, we used to have a fashion show after fashion show each Hump Day, and I feel like that's what people really look forward to—the variety, not only the Greeks but the. The fashion show, the um, shuffles, the just whatever. You know what I'm saying? Nah, Not facts. the same thing every day. No hate to the Greeks because I love the Greeks. I love watching them. But, nah, facts. You know what I'm saying? Shout you know? out to the Greeks, man. Right. So I just feel like it's there could be more. There's so many different student student organizations that can be represented in Hump Day. Facts. You know so, yeah. Because um, it's a lot of organizations that don't be really doing nothing. Right. Exactly. And I feel like, I don't know, I feel like Kev can definitely... Um, collab with more organizations and reach out to more organizations for real, besides just house of vision but that honestly is not really under the students control so much it's more like what the advisor is trying to do but yeah um what do y'all think pv needs to stop immediately like they need to stop it today day auction stripper pose sharing lovers or parking police Parking police <laughs> uh so like get them out of here mm-hmm. i'm gonna say the parking police, yeah, but you gotta think about it. Like you go to a college, like yeah. the, the whole purpose of the parking police is to make your ass walk to class. But do y'all know? Do y'all know where the the fees go? I don't care because they cleared my balance. Are you sure? <laughs> but here's the only thing. Yeah, they here to make us walk to class. But shit, if we ain't got enough spots to park in, right? What you expect us to do? Like make it make sense. If nah, y'all facts. want us to park where we supposed to park, give us enough parking spots and we go park there. Nah, right. facts. I'm not gonna lie, like. The freshmen str- have a problem with that. Mm. Like, because y'all got that one parking lot and the other little parking lot that's next to it. But, like, it right. would be so many freshmen with so many cars. So, it's like, yeah. I feel it's like really hard. With like, this I feel year. like they need another parking lot for the freshmen, yeah. But as far as, like, us upperclassmen, parking, like, in the view, mm-hmm. the square, like, it's pretty. It's pretty decent. Yeah. Unless you come back from a party one night, it's like 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. Like, yeah. you live in view, too. You can't park on the backside. All those gone. You got to park yeah. in the middle somewhere. But even, like, in a freshman, whenever I come back from parties, bro, I'll be waiting in the parking lot for literally, like, 30 minutes trying to figure out who going to leave. And I, I, it's easier with weekend parties because no, everybody be either gone or at home or at, still at the party. And on the weekends, you can park wherever you want to. 
I know, yeah, yeah of course. On the weekends is easy. Yeah, but like say it's they like, be at their sneaky link houses and shit. <laughs> <laughs> But like, say it's like, um, it's full. Like, I'm gonna have to park in the, and it's a weekday. I'm gonna have to park in the library parking lot, and parking police literally stays in the library parking lot all day. Facts. Cars, I got a ticket cars. in the library parking lot. Mm-hmm. Better so, pay that five dollars. Five. Oh God. Oh, I, I thought you meant the ticket was five dollars. I was nah, like, it's five dollars. You get to park there all day. I be doing that. Sometimes I be doing that too. But yeah. sometimes, like, cause I used to drive to class sometimes. But then I found out that it was quicker to ride my scooter to class than to drive. Yeah, of course. So it then is. when. When I remember I got this one ticket, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, bro, this shit lame as hell. Yeah. But, I mean, shout out to PV, man. They cleared all our balances. Knock on no, wood. No, for real, I never man. got a parking ticket yet. Knock on wood. Knock man, on I'm something. already on number two. I ain't paying that number two. They going to have to see me about that. I've already, like. So you got a ticket room. after they cleared the balances? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You out of there. <laughs> I know. I know. So where do the parking tickets go to? They go to SGA, Student Fees. What? All student fees go to SGA. That's why uh, that actually the parking management does not. They don't see your appeals. They just give you the ticket. SGA, whoever's in charge of it, like one of the students, they appeal. Oh, so if I know a student at SGA, I could get them to appeal my stuff. Yeah, but I, you got to know like who who's appealing. Ah, uh, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. I got. I got to. No, let me find out. <laughs> right. I'm gonna start, <laughs> I'm gonna start being besties <laughs> with them. <laughs> Nah, for real. Like, I'm so, gonna need y'all to go ahead and Y'all, what are y'all majors? I'm a communications major and a business marketing minor. What about you? Uh, I'm a marketing major right now, but I'm finna get ready and switch it probably to communications or juvenile justice. Okay. So, so me being an ag major, like, as y'all know, this is an ag school. Mm-hmm. And we got this huge farm. Right. But what makes me so mad is that I spend all this money to go to school mm-hmm. and they do not allow us to, like, use any of the resources on the farm, like, what if I want to become a farmer? Like, what if I want to learn how to do different things? What if I want to, you feel me? And every time, like, people try to go to the farm and do something, it's always an excuse as to why you can't do this, why you can't do that. What? So, okay, what is, what exactly do they have on the farm? Like, what kind of farm is it? So, they got, like, cattle on the farm. They got goats on the farm. They got dairy goats. They got a, a processing plant. Mm-hmm. And they don't let you use that They got all. a horticulture area. area. They got, like, greenhouses. And it's not the fact that they don't let you, well, it's not the fact that they don't let you use it, but it's like, it's a hard process. Like, they have, they select a few that they keep out there. And it's like, what is the point of me paying all this money to go to school here and I can't even, like, use it, you feel me? Or I can't learn something. Like, it's not about getting paid. It's not about, because, like, they have workers out there. Mm -hmm. So when people come out there, nine times out of ten, they be trying to work on a farm. But it's like, it's not about that. Like, some people just want to learn how to do different things. Exactly. And exposure. the horizon. Yeah, exactly. Because like, I'm going to be so real with you. Like, before I was came here in the summer, I was going to go to Sam Houston. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, when I went to Sam Houston, like, the school was so open and welcoming and That's stuff great. like that. And, like, the people on the farm, like, they was like, you can do this, this, and that. Oh, so they have a farm as well? Yeah, they got a huge farm. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I would expect that because, I mean, it is a PWI, and I feel like, no shade or anything, but I feel like HBCUs not only are very limited, but when they do have stuff, I feel like you got to really be on, be them on about tip. Them. Like, you nah, gotta fact. This one on girl, age. she a senior in my class. Mm-hmm. And I asked her the other day, I said, how many times have you been to the farm? Mm-hmm. Like, she ag major? Yeah. Mm-hmm. She said two times. I'm like, damn, two times out of four years? Times. And you know how much money it takes to go to school? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, you going to tell me that I can't use my resources? That's like, because... You- Know about the radio station, and yeah. Because you in the radio station, but that's like that's like Lofton saying, "Oh, we can no longer have shows, we can no longer have events um, and stuff like that." I know the radio station has given me so many different opportunities and so nah, many different connections. So that's like that being taken away from me, so I can understand where you come. Like, but they be talking about liability and all this other <laughs> shit. Like I got insurance, <laughs> right? I got multiple like insurance. They scared you bulls could sign waivers, like people. You know Facts, what I'm it ain't shit to make a waiver. Yeah. Uh, period, and that's um, and we are pretty much grown, so I feel like we could we could all sign that waiver. And if we can't, I mean, we got parents, you know what I'm saying? So Facts. I just feel like shit. If I get ran over and some shit happens, shit, that's just on me. That's on you because you probably time. doing something to get ran over. <laughs> I, well, funny story. When I was in uh, high school, my my sophomore year, I had got a steer. Mm-hmm. Like I had to did the cow scramble at the rodeo. And I had, um like, caught one of them, so they give you money to, like, they give you a sponsor that gives you money to go get a steer, right? Mm-hmm. I got a steer, and when I got them, like, at first, you got to break them and stuff. I remember I tried to put the halter on them first time, but, 
ran me over <laughs> oh, my mama. What? I was mad as hell I did not want to go back in it I was Wait, scared how old were you again? I was a sophomore in high oh. school Oh my god And then one day before my baseball game My ag teacher he had came he was like, all right, so we finna go in there. We finna go put this on them. So we both in there. Well, they ran both our ass over. <laughs> I'm dead. I had to start uh, giving them melatonin. No. Oh, my God. You, had, were you supposed to give them melatonin? Oh, okay. I could have. I used to put like eight or ten in there. Okay. Because they were so big, bro. I'm like, mm. bro, ass was tweaking. I don't know how y'all, like, I love animals. But I don't. I don't feel like I could take care of them Let's like, go cow like that. Every oh my gosh, please don't remind me. My brother in law went cow tipping once, and he told me his story. Nah, facts. I was thinking about that, bro. We on a farm. We got a farm out here with hundreds of cows. Yeah. <laughs> hey. I bet you that's probably another reason why uh, we got taken away. People go yeah, cow tipping. Crackhead chicken. Hey, y'all get this video to what? What you say? How many likes? Three hundred k. Three hundred k. Oh my god. Oh my god. Shit. Three hundred k would be amazing. <laughs> Yeah, three hundred k. Hey, sure. y'all get this three hundred k. I'll go run with the damn bull. How about that? Hey, <laughs> y'all, yeah, y'all, yeah. y'all get this video three hundred k. I'll go run with the bull. But nah, you gonna be like Deion Sanders at Colorado running with the buff. Hey, before the football game. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna take off. Hey, just tell my mama have my insurance card ready. All right, bitch. Hey, I no cap. It. No cap. PV act up next week, bro. We need a promo video. We might have to get you on the bull. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we'll 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 have to talk about that off the camp. <laughs> That's uh, funny. Yeah. Uh, y'all want to keep going? Facts. Okay, bet. Well, let's let's keep talking about uh, PV culture. We could talk about um, PV culture. All right, I got one. What about it? I got one. Can we talk about how the simple fact that there is no such thing as a PV love story out here? Facts. Hey, well, this let's is the bring one. This I'm sorry, Joy. I, I Joy understand. can't I talk on this. Joy, Joy can't talk on this, but oh, okay. I was about to say but it. me and Jay go speak on this. One. <laughs> Facts. I'll just mute my mic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. PV love story. There ain't no PV love story, man. Look, one thing you gotta realize, man. Especially out here in PV. Especially to all y'all that's thinking about coming to PV. You know, Facts. what I'm saying if you're fresh out here, you ain't never really try getting involved with somebody. The mindset you gotta have. Is that that person is already messing with probably about five other Facts. People. I remember the ratio here in my freshman year. It was like 21 girls to one boy. It's 88, oh, it's, it's 88 to, yeah, one it's 88 to one now. It's 88 to one? Oh, my God. 88, 88 to girls one. to one dude? Yeah. <laughs> y'all yeah. better rap y'all willy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> y'all go have some shit. That's so put that into perspective. But even still, man. Like, 80, I'm not going to lie. 88 to one, though. Like, it's more girls than dudes. So it, it's kind of weird because even though it's more girls than dudes, these girls still be out here doing fuck shit. They, I've heard Boy, some stories. Crazy. I ain't what? gonna lie. If you find your love story, you just lucky. You lucky like me for real. Nah, for real. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. It was just one girl, but I was talking to in the summer for mm-hmm. no. Yeah, we talking mm-hmm. for in the summer, and then like a little bit this school year. Mind you, like everything cool. It was great, bro. I'm like great. <laughs> then we went to this thing one day And I seen that She had a uh, Oh look So my phone was broke So I was using her phone To call my people I was at trail ride Cause I had the horses and stuff okay. So boom I'm using her phone right And some dude texts Hey baby I'm like what the <gasps> fuck oh. But mind you We had trail ride So I just played it cool You feel me So I, I wait to never play it cool. no, no, no no I played it cool So I seen it But I ain't bring it up Until we got uh, to the crib So we went to take the horses Back home I got to the crib, and I'm about to go shower and shit. Her and her friend in my car just chopping up. So I text her. I'm like, damn, what was this? I'm like, I don't even want to go no more. <laughs> you feel me? So, boom. When I uh when I text her that, she was like, oh, he going to get cut off with the wood. You know the same bullshit they be saying. Please, Y'all what? be lying. These be motherfuckers lying. be lying. <laughs> like, like, that's the thing, though. Like, if y'all be straight up with us, nine times out of ten, we going to accept it. But the fact that y'all try to play... And the yeah. nigga face. And then the catch to it, fool, mind you, she she said all that. I was like, all right, cool. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't giving a fuck. So I, so we was still talking and shit. Then this one, they had that who bitch and who nigga group chat this year. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I Say, praying. fool. I said short in the group chat. <laughs> <laughs> I said short in the group chat, but I ain't going to lie. She passed the test of the group chat. They was like, nah. Ain't okay. nobody speak up. But then I thought about the nigga, and I looked up his name on her Instagram. 
No, I just was like, fuck it, let me. What's his Instagram type right. shit? Mm-hmm. I'm finna address this shit. Oh, you God. feel me? Because niggas in the group chat get mad at the bitch. As you should. <laughs> so like, I'm finna address this shit. So, boom. Uh, I get ready to address it. And she was like, oh. Like, she wasn't trying to give me the Instagram, but I just looked up her name. And, and well, I was she like. She's not trying to give you the Instagram because she And she was acting guilty. So I was like, damn, well, fuck it. I'm just going to go ask, bro. I'm like, bro, we fucking with the same girl. <laughs> Little mm-hmm. do you know. That's, man, that's crazy good. Because Funny story too man You can deal with a girl Y'all can stop talking Be cool And then look over Is she trying to mess with your homeboy I'm, I'm talking about I'm talking about like Yo day one homeboy like. Nah facts Hey fool I know a nigga bro I was talking to the one girl We weren't talking for long It was probably like A week mm-hmm. A couple weeks And then A week or a couple weeks And then bro When when like we got into it, a situation happened basically. Then the nigga started fucking with her afterwards. I'm like, damn, uh-uh. you supposed to be my bro. But See, I, but here's the thing though. But I wasn't really tripping with it because yeah. she wasn't really serious for real. But you feel me? That's crazy. Before I okay, I ain't gonna lie. I got a story to tell. My PB story. Before I started dating uh, my boyfriend, now I ain't gonna lie. There is a guy that was trying to get with me, and I I wasn't going for it because I knew how PB was. And I knew he just looked like a, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going, I'm not a but very judgy person. But motherfuckers be saying that about me, bro. And that shit, like <laughs> but, motherfuckers be like, oh, you a promoter. You got hoes. I'm like, wait, Damn. I mean, no. Let me put this out there. Just because I'm a dreadhead does not mean I'm a hoe. Right. I'll say it again. Just because I got dreads in my head does not make me a hoe. All right. Oh, <laughs> all right. But let me, okay, so basically he was just trying to get with me. And my roommate, I, she was going to be my roommate at the time. She lives in Houston as well. And so we was just going to meet up. We was going to go to the aquarium. We was going to have a good time, blah, blah, blah. And so we was, like, having girls talk or whatever. And she was like, so are there any dudes, you know, uh, that's trying to get with you? You know, you're really pretty, blah, 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 blah. I was chopping it up. And I was like, yeah, there's this one guy. But, you know, I'm not really going. So I showed a picture and an Instagram. And she shows me the same dude. And I'm like, oh, my God. And he knows that me and her are going to be roommates. Uh-huh. And I'm like, that's crazy. Let's get serious because that nigga wanted the best of both worlds. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and that th- mind you, like my my overmate, she was bad. Like she's really really pretty. She still go here? And yeah, her name is. Uh, I'm not gonna say her name. Ooh. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna <laughs> say her name. I'm not gonna say names on here. It's I'm crazy because I know exactly who you talking about. Her roommate, her about. roommate. I know exactly who you talking about? I know the dude and the roommate. Oh my! She God. got a boyfriend. Like, well, I don't think so. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, here he go. Here he go. Like. <laughs> Here he go. We need a blind yeah. date podcast. I, period. That would be that's just insane. I ain't gonna lie. That'd be interesting. Yeah, but that ooh that I texted him. I gave. I literally called him and I was like, "Hello." And so um, I, I asked him. I was like, "Do you know?" I said her name, and then um, you didn't say her. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't go say. It. I'm not you gonna, say, gonna it. say it. Um, and she was like, "Yeah, that that's just my friend. I I just wanted to friend, talk to her. Just a friend. I wanted okay. to talk to her." Um, <laughs> a couple like months a, ago And I was like really A couple months ago And we just got out here Yeah that's what I'm saying We know No we're not even out here yet It was like July Early July uh, Late June When this happened and I was like Wait her name started with an R No <laughs> Oh wait yo, no, I'm don't. like nowhere <laughs> Already God damn Nah it's not That's not uh, It don't start with an R it's She was here during Summer Bridge mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> You know <right? laughs> I might shit You might yeah I'm, Yeah it's crazy. I remember the dude, but I'm really trying to put my finger on who the female was. I know exactly who the dude I'll say was. I'll say that, that, that. Yeah. But yeah. Off the cam. Off the cam. For sure. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's crazy though. Um I wanted to ask y'all, like being in school so far, how do y'all feel about it? Mm. And do y'all think school is worth it? Mm. Okay, so me and my mom was just having this serious conversation like last weekend. Um the marketing major, me personally, I feel like it's not for me. Like if I were to continue doing it, because I feel like I'm in school to get a to learn stuff for my career that I'm gonna get. Nah, so right. I feel like if this information, I should be enjoying learning this so I can enjoy my career. Exactly. I'm not. I, I'm not enjoying marketing. So yeah, I feel like school may not be for me. But then that's when I had a serious sit down, talk with myself, and realize what do I enjoy. You know, I enjoy doing stuff like this. I enjoy emceeing, being on the mic. You know, what I'm saying promoting nah, stuff. Facts. Yeah. So I'm going to get ready and change my major to communications mm-hmm. and give that a try and see how that goes. Um, but I feel like that would be a much better fit for me. I feel like it's honestly finding what your major is, what your fit is, what your environment is, you know. Exactly. 
and then from there deciding if it's for you so it's a journey that everybody got to take on their own yeah for me personally um i feel like because me and aiden we were in summer bridge together and we were both business majors and i was a business marketing major as well and i don't have a problem with the business side of everything but like with me i want to be in the media like i want to be Nah, in social media, I want to be like an influencer. Um, yeah, I want to be an influencer, and I've already started my journey. So if it's like business marketing, yeah, I like I like that side, but I feel like there's not really too much I can learn because I've been I have been a social media manager and a, a marketing assistant for plenty of organizations. So I, why am I going to school for it? I already know what to do. You know what I'm nah, saying? I already like, got, got got that experience. I've so. been feeling like that with like my major, but since I'm going to school to be like. A veterinarian? Yeah. Well, it's that's different. different. Yeah. But, like, if I wasn't going to school to be a veterinarian, I just wanted to do, like, be a vet tech. Like, mm-hmm. I've been a vet tech so many times. It's just, like, yeah. I mean, it's cool. Like, you get paid good, but that ain't what I want to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. And that's, I changed my, um, I changed my major to com- communications. My mom's a communications major as well. And she, she changed it just like me, actually. Um, and so... What I feel like is since I want to be in the media, I want to be, like, hosting stuff. I want to be out there nah, because that. that's just, like, my personality, and that's what I like to do. Like, I like to do podcasts and stuff like that. Why am I in the business field? You know what I'm saying? If I'm not going to be – if I don't plan on owning, owning like, a big business. Like, I feel like I'll be an entrepreneur, but – that's not my main focus. I mean, think about business, it like this, though. Business is cool, though. Like, that's why it's my, it's, my, it's my minor. Even though what I'm doing, like – I'm still going to school for business. Like, I got to learn how to run a office, like, run all that different stuff. Yeah. Even though I'm going to school for ag, but, like, I have a business now, and I sell livestock supplies. So, it's like, mm-hmm. if I was just doing business, I could actually learn off of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean. But majority of the stuff for a business is pretty easy. Like, when you get into taxes and all that stuff, like, they really just have seminars and stuff where they'll teach you everything. For free so it's nah, not facts. really like people go to school and be like oh i'm doing business for this it's not do you really need a degree for your own business right. for me it was just like do you really need business for your own business i mean yeah like you want to learn different things that like some stuff can't teach you mm-hmm. but if you already got the master plan of what you want to do with your life go do that shit i don't give a fuck what it is ain't nothing yeah. impossible in life yeah i feel the same way i feel like you could always learn something Especially with technology nowadays, the YouTube University, like, you can always nah, learn fact. what Bro. you learn in the classroom. I feel like classroom is more for, like, people that need uh, that hands-on stuff, which is not a bad thing. Like, I'm a hands-on learner, but it just kind of depends on what you need. You need to do your research whether you need to go to college or not. YouTube there teaches are, everything. And right. I ain't going to lie. A lot of people didn't know this about me, but, like, before I came here in the summertime, like, when my freshman year, I had, a like, a long year, like, I was going to blend. I was staying in a townhouse. I was paying for my car. Like, I had to pay for all that myself. Mm-hmm. And, like, I had lost my job, man. I dead ass was living off my business. Like, I'm paying $1,000 in bills for my, my business for real. And I'm like, damn, like, this shit here just made me realize how much money I could just make on my by myself. Like, I'm paying $1,000 plus in bills, and I'm still going outside having fun and shit. Like, yeah. I ain't got to work for nobody. As it should. Because you get to control how much money you want. I'm already a promoter, so I know how to put information out there. It ain't shit to put information and get the right crowd out there. Like, we finna have a Zodico night. And it's like, we already, got, we already got six groups, that, six trail ride groups that's already on. But it's like, that's just the groups that's hosting. Like, that's not the people that's coming just to come. Yeah. yeah I totally feel Facts. That. And I would say this. You go to HBCU. <laughs> Please learn. The Tamiya dance. Can't get enough. Y'all know what oh I'm talking my about. God. Yeah, because they be yes. fucking up. Like, I hate when people be doing the can't get enough and then they bumping into you and shit. Like, damn. You be going the wrong way, bro. We was doing that. We was doing that uh, at the radio station. And I was like, this girl next to me kept going. And she kept looking at me to, like, see, like, what to do next and stuff like that. But you can't be going the wrong way. You can if learn it, but just way. stand in the back, please. Right. Or stand nah, to the real. side. Like, no hate or anything. Just nah. Stand to the side. Because, uh, shit. When I came out here, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't really know how to do it. But by now, you should know how to do it. Y'all yeah. gonna hate me, but I do not know my class shuffle. Oh my. You don't know your class shuffle? No, me I neither. wasn't here. I wasn't here. You I you never learned that up it. You don't know your class shuffle? I was and asleep. You was in Panther camp. I went to sleep. You better Man. get eyes choked. Mine. 
I know, like, bits and pieces of Power up. Power up. Up, up, up. But, yeah, that's why I'm going to hit that every single time, okay? Like, nah, I'm technically class of 25, though. Like, Same. I'm, I'm graduating from 25. Too live. Yeah, I need to learn 25 for real, for real, because that's really, like, the class I'm graduated, but I'm forever 2'6". Forever 2'6", is crazy. Yeah. No, what do you mean Forever 2'6 uh-huh. is crazy There ain't nothing wrong With 2'6 It's six. damn near time For 2'7 now 2'6 <laughs> too lit no, Bro you know 2'7's chant is like 2'7 Send you to heaven Or something like that I ain't I'm gonna like, lie They gonna have nothing But she wanna to Right yeah <laughs> They gonna be Bro they was saying it on Twitter oh, <laughs> TikTok you like a mug Not TikTok But they said that about us too Cause But we only got like That one dance That go like this You know From TikTok yeah. I just In the hips as well But everything else uh, they, they finna be rocking And they finna be doing That little turn thing You know You know they be doing That turn they thing finna. To every mm. song Like every uh, song uh, I don't even know how to, uh, He, he, he doing thing? it right now the Man it's like Wait well, stand up and do it Cause I'm not Bro it's that. like you ain't finna embarrass me. <laughs> oh, oh, this? Yeah, yeah, you turn around <laughs> with it, yeah. <laughs> Not embarrass you. I just wasn't, I didn't understand why you were sitting down. You should have went like this first. Oh, you got to hit like, that. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know how to do oh, it, don't you, huh? Yeah, I do. You want to see? I don't. No. Yeah, let me, let me yeah, see. Yeah, let me get that joint for us. Hold on. Let me put the headphones down. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh. Live performance. Uh-oh, here we go. Wow. Hey, hey, uh, hey. Uh, uh, turn. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey man, look, we like to have a good I'm time. Dead. Man. Nah, for real. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely hit that. One. I ain't gonna lie. Nah, facts. But um, <laughs> um, yeah. But I feel like with everything going on since we talked about it, um, I feel like PV has its cons, but PV has definitely has its pros. Um, one thing I don't like is how damn slow they move. Like <laughs> the office here, bro. The counselors, yeah, everything. They move so goddamn slow, but when they want some money, yeah, they be your ass. Um, yeah, for I'm sure. Like damn, bro. And like if you if you, I feel like financial aid was a big problem this year. Like you really got to be in their face. I remember. Right. Oh, let me tell y'all. So I had a bad experience, bro. Yeah, a bit. Let me tell, bro. Okay, so I moved from back. Uh, I've been moving back and forth from my hometown, Kansas City, in Houston. Like my whole life, and I was po- I moved back to Houston um, for college, and so basically, I got in state tuition because my mom had um, had proof that we lived in Houston. So like I have in state tuition now, and so we changed it last semester. Now for the upcoming the the next year, um, they changed my stuff back to out of state. So mind you, it was forty one thousand dollars. So I'm looking at God my damn. I'm like. Forty one thousand dollars is state. fucking crazy to yes. go to school. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I might as well go to PDWI with with this kind of mess. So I was just like, Mm-mm. I saw my back to financial. Aid. They was like, Oh, there's not really much that we could do. And I was like, Um, if you look at this year, I'm in state. So why would you put me back out of state? So I literally stayed in the office for like an hour, and they finally changed me back. I had to the in worst state. experience ever, bro. Mm-hmm. Like what I was, was here serious? in the summer, right? And so I had just transferred in the summer. I, I literally had turned in all the paperwork and all that like a couple weeks before, like a week before, really. Mm-hmm. Packed up. And mind you, I was still paying my townhouse rent when I came here. Mm-hmm. So, like, boom, I come here. And I'm, like, uh, here during the summer. And then the next semester finna come. So I'm, like, all right, I got to get my housing for the, the, the fall. Yeah. So, boom, I tried to get housing for the fall before the deadline where we had to move out. Mm-hmm. But they ain't had shit. Oh my god! Yeah, they like the housing's terrible, bro. They told me they have no housing nowhere on campus. I'm like, damn. And right now I live in a view two, so like I'm chilling. I was in view one last year, but I was like, damn, y'all ain't even got the phases. Like, that's nigga, crazy. nobody don't want to go to the phases, but shit, you ain't got phase one and two. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> I need so y'all then, I heard that out. multiple times. Then I had to come back, bro. Like I had to go home for that whole semester, do online, then come back this this semester. All right, I need y'all to hear me out. I'm like, I need y'all to hear me out real well. PV housing, I don't understand how I can apply for two bedrooms. Facts. At every single property when the application came out. Facts. But I'm in a four bedroom in the phases. Same. So I need y'all to explain this to me. Because right now, I'm out for y'all. They be throwing, they be throwing people. I ain't going to lie. Like, PV get too much goddamn money for this sorry ass housing. Yeah, I feel like they should have been upgraded. The only and what's really getting me is that they trying to move the freshmen to the square, and I'm like, like these niggas ain't earn they. I mean, <laughs> these people ain't earn they keeps yet. 
at all. And I feel like you need to be in the UC. It builds character. It definitely builds character. Facts. For and me. then you'll and be in that micro fridge. Yeah. Man. Yeah, you need that. <laughs> no, you need facts. that in your life. I feel like, like they need the UC because look, if they in the UC, they under rules. Mm-hmm. You can't even be doing all that extra. Like when parents' kids go to the, go to school that freshman year, they be worried. Like, right. you feel me? I know my mom. Was. So like, the UC was the perfect start. But now if you want to put freshmen in the square and stuff. They gonna feel like, oh, they yeah, better than the other freshmen and stuff. Yeah, you feel me? Which I feel like okay, because like who the, they gonna put in the UC though? No, they're trying to redo the UC, I guess, because there's like it's mold all in the like the AC things. Like like my friend's room, even in my room, but my friend's room had it so bad that she could not physically stay there because if she were to turn on the the heat like it'd be the the smell of burning mold you can't, oh my god you can't um inhale that and it's really really bad. i would have sued the shit out to school she was i told her to do that and she didn't want to like i'm like bro let's get serious if you don't get your money back the, get your tuition back like the uc trash the phase is trash terrible phase one and two is trash terrible yeah. phase three and six is okay i could deal with it but like the only is okay. yeah. the only good stuff we got on campus is the view and the square. Like we need more housing like that. Like niggas pay too much money to go to school here. For one, we ain't even in school for that long, mm-hmm. and, and each semester we paying three, four thousand. And even um, even like the off campus, the P Hill. And yeah, them Riverside, bitches suck too, boy. Yeah, like how you gonna be off campus and suck? Facts. That's, and then mm-hmm. the Brookside suck. Mm-hmm. P Hill suck. Yeah. Richardson suck. And the one that we do have, the Gates, yeah, they live. They live as shit. Yeah, the Gates is cool. But it's like, I'm not finna go spend $1,300 to go live in a one-bedroom apartment. That's It is close to school, but it's like, I can go get me an apartment in Cyprus for that price a month. Oh, God. And pay gas. And have a garage and everything. Yeah. Like a townhouse or some shit where, you feel me? Like, I'm not finna go live in student housing and pay $1,300. That shit ass. I'm going to be so real. When I was going to Texas and them. I had a lease for the next school year, but I had to cancel it because I came out here. Mm-hmm. And it was a four by four. Like, it was a four bedroom, four bath. And it was at this place called Park West. So, at Park West, we was paying $625 a month with all the utilities and all that included. So, paying $600 a month with all the utilities and stuff included. We had a um, We had a store downstairs, like a little grocery store. They had a deli, and they sold, like, food and stuff. Yeah. Then we had a pool, like a rooftop pool, and both of the other complexes had pools for $625 a month. I'm like, and that's where all the athletes nice and everybody inside? stayed. Facts. It was mm-hmm. the best housing out there. But then it all Is goes it? back to the fact that HBCUs are underfunded. Like, yeah, I mean, like, we let, under let, Okay, I'm going to be so, so honest with you. I don't think it's the fact that we underfunded. I don't think, I think they just don't want to let the funds go. Right, we we a little bit too lazy on the, but it is underfunded. I feel like we get a lot of things, especially with it. That's why we wanted Ruth the Truth back, like especially with the the whole Texas A and M controversy and them um, underfunding us as a system because we are under the you like you know how Texas A and M is trying to make it yeah. non HBCU. Like I feel like it's our fault and it is the white people's fault. It's it's like it's it's double the trouble. You know what I'm saying? Nah, like, facts. So yeah, I get where you saying, and I get what you saying, Jay. Cause it's it's really both for real. Um, Cause like the school got money, bro. Mm-hmm. Don't let them fool you, nigga. They make too much goddamn money. They got money. Mm-hmm. They a could school, really build a new housing just based off of the parking tickets. Uh, like, let's uh, be real. A government. Yeah. First off, schools are funded from like the government, right? Right, exactly. Because it's a um, it's um, all schools, even like elementary schools and high schools and stuff, is are funded the by the government. Yeah. But the only, like, I can say this. In high school, I know, I know there's a difference because I used to go to, like, a black school and then I moved to a white majority white school. Mm-hmm. Like, the difference is between, so, like, I'm going to say at the minority schools, like, the booster clubs and all that, oh, yeah. it's not as strong as at the other schools. Because mm-hmm. I noticed, like, going to majority white school, like, the booster clubs, all that, like, the parents super involved. Right. They paying money, like. The person that's over the booster club was over the H E B. Like he was a manager at the H E B in our little city. Mm-hmm. So it was like our baseball team had whatever we needed. Yeah. The sports organizations had whatever they needed. The little local businesses support, like you feel me? Mm-hmm. I feel like with me going with both, I could see exactly what you're talking about. But at the same time, because whenever I lived in Kansas City, it was way different from when I lived in uh Katy. In Kansas City, like 
it was all black schools in the in the city area. And Kansas is like so, where that stuff started back then. Yeah, I, 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 that's what I'm saying. Like in the Kansas side, there's where the white people live. In the in the Missouri side, that's where the black people live. I lived uh, obviously in Missouri, and Kansas when I used tell to be you, really divided back in the day. Yeah, it is. It still is. It's the um, it's called the truce line. I think um, it's really really bad, and it's like to the point where it's like, whenever it, it's a walking city, sort of. Like, there's sidewalks um, on the most important parts. But when I tell you, like, if I'm trying to get to the corner store down the street, I have to walk in the grass or I have to walk in the street because there are no sidewalks. And it's, like, it's terrible grass. It's terrible land. Everything. they Like, the government does not take care of us whatsoever, which is understandable. Like, it's to the point where, like, the police, if we were to call the police because a shooting happened, they have to come hours later because it's active shooting. And it's, it's really, really, like, it was so bad. There was a, there was a stop sign in front of my house with a bullet hole in it. That's crazy. Like what? Like don't even make no sense. Like and it, it's, I feel like it's not really. I I don't want to be controversial, but it's really our fault and their fault at the same time because y'all not policing us, but at the same time, we're mm-hmm. kind of we're doing the most. You know what I'm saying? I feel Facts. I feel for you. The police not wanting to be involved because there's a lot more of us than there is police. So they that will get like caught the in police something. scared. <laughs> they are. They are. They literally will not come till a couple hours later. We call the police at six o'clock. They won't get here till ten because they're waiting for it to be over. Sound like if you get a shootout in Kansas, you just need to have that stick on you. <laughs> you better just keep busting. <laughs> you better, you better run. <laughs> nah, for real. Nah, hey, you, you make a trip to Kansas. Make sure you got that thing on you, man. Oh nah, God. Facts. And it's just kind of all like, beef goes to Kansas now. But I, know I got a four hour window. <laughs> you got four hours to the police come. It's like the purge, hours. baby. And like it is it's bro. I remember I was um this is when I didn't have my car. I was walking from the bus stop and this is what I see. I see a car zooming past me. And I'm thinking it's just it's a regular day and cause they, they always speed in the neighborhoods. But then I see a police car bust that corner and I'm like, oh my God, bro. And they, they bro, hanging out the damn window. And I'm like, what are we doing, bro? What are we doing? <laughs> it's and not I like just, a madhouse. No, it's just, I just feel like the government doesn't really care about nah, black facts. cities like that. But white cities for sure, I just, they'll come in a heart. They'll come before you call. Like 911 in white right neighborhoods. neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out my nigga J. Cole. <laughs> nah, facts. Yeah. But now nah, I think we had a pretty good podcast today. What y'all think? I need uh, to. Most definitely. Episode two will be coming soon. Nah, For facts. Sure. Life with Jay, man. We back here with JoJo Chanel A3. Yup. See y'all later. Yo. Y'all better. All right. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>